What is the worst thing that has happened at a high school reunion party that you attended? Story 1. The people who were supposed to plan our high school reunion dropped the ball, so I figured it wouldn't happen. But then this other dude from our high school stepped up to plan it. He was in a graduate program and also working part-time at a banquet hall, and he said that his boss would give us the banquet hall space for free. It was a really nice gesture, and he seemed really into it. He had been miserable in high school, grumpy, sullen, unpleasant, mean to other people. He came out in college, so maybe the weight of having to keep it a secret was part of why he was so unpleasant. Maybe he'd be more fun now. I was working a crap job and had no savings at the time, so I was neither interested in having my former classmates pity me, nor was I gunning to shell out a lot of money to attend. Plus, my crappy ex might be there, and that didn't feel worth it. The organizer made a Facebook event and added people to Venmo him the cost of admission prior to attending. He wanted something like $15 to $20 a head, I can't remember. Anyway, it didn't feel like paying for it. Maybe if there would be some drinks included or something, I would go for an hour. I sent him a private message asking what the admissions ticket covered. Food, drinks, the space was free after all. He posted publicly on the Facebook page that if the cost of admission was too steep, message me and we can work out some financial aid. Uh, what? I then publicly posted asking what the admission cost covered. No response. Other people asked too. He said it would go towards having a bartender and server dedicated to the event space as well as towards food. Okay, fair. Folks, he was the server. My friend showed up having not yet paid him and he barred her entry. The people who had paid the admission cost showed up to an empty banquet hall, were given a menu by their former classmate, and told to order their own food and drink from him. He pocketed the admission ticket money as his fee. After an hour, he brought out one grocery store sheet cake for 75 people to share. That was it. LOL, I am envisioning people fighting for the crappy cake. This sounds about right. I've skipped both my 10 and, uh, yes, 20-year class reunion, but my hometown is composed mostly of dive bars and churches. From what I've heard, the parties have been mostly townies and a few others getting drunk at a rundown banquet room. Can't say I feel like I missed out there. Story 2. At my 10-year high school reunion, we had a decent turnout, maybe 100-plus people. We were at a pretty nice hotel banquet hall. There was one guy I had known all through high school, and he was a well-known stoner. I'll call him Chris for this story. I see Chris walk into the banquet hall, stop in his tracks, turn around in a very slow 360-degree circle surveying the entire room. He just says, whoa, and he looks visibly alarmed. He stops and his eyes settle on me. I say, hey, Chris, long time no see, man. He kind of slides over to me and whispers in my ear, this is really weird. I'm pretty sure I know every single person in this room. And that is when I realize he is wearing the same clothes as all the banquet hall workers. Oh my God, Chris is working at a server at his own high school reunion and he has no clue what is happening. I walk him out to the front lobby and explain it's our 10-year high school reunion. He is mortified, beyond embarrassed. He was never contacted and didn't even realize it had been 10 years since we graduated. He just knew he was working another catering gig in a never-ending series of catering gigs. I made him take me to his manager. I explain what is happening and tell the manager there is no way this guy is working his own high school reunion. Awesomely, the manager agrees. We find a different suit jacket and tie for him and I take Chris back to the party. He ended up having a good night. That's awesome. I'm really happy that story ended up having a happy ending. I'm pretty sure if I had been in his shoes and the manager told me I had to work it, I would have quit on the spot. Story 3. It's been a decade since I finished school. I see an old classmate sometimes when he does maintenance work in my apartment block. About a year ago, he asked if I was going to the reunion organized by some of our classmates. I said no because I couldn't think of anything worse and also hadn't been invited. Apparently, they organized it over Facebook, which I don't have. When I saw him six months later, I asked how the reunion was, and he exasperatedly explained that it had been a real crap show. The mean girls had started planning it together, fell out, and then started each planning their own. So there were about four crappy, tiny, awkward parties, and everyone was confused. This sounds like it should have been a TLC show where the judges vote on whose party was the best. The winner gets to go on a date with the former star QB who picks them up on his old motorcycle. Story 4. My 50th is scheduled for October. All this is inspiring me to go just to see what happens. I hope I can get across the country by then. I skipped all the early ones, just did my 35th a few months ago. 
Once you're as old as we are, most of the BS posturing and status-seeking is over and people just want to get drunk and hang out. I was not a huge fan of high school and still had a pretty good time. Story 5. It wasn't really bad, just odd. A guy came with full Kiss-style makeup on, white face, black shapes around his eyes, and black lips. We were too awkward and polite to mention it, so everyone just chatted with him as though it was completely normal to turn up like that. Did you maybe go to school with a member of Kiss? Do you recall one of your friends talking about making out with a guy with a huge tongue? You never know. Story 6. One guy had made not one, but two fortunes and had a net worth of well over $100 million by our 20th reunion. High-speed modem patents in the late 1980s, early investor in broadband, right place at the right time. He'd already retired. On our classmate update bulletin, he listed his occupation as unemployed and unemployable as a bit of a gag. Some of the well-meaning but clueless types sought him out to offer encouragement and tips on how to find work. Story 7. Someone I knew from school tried to arrange an unofficial reunion as the school wasn't going to do one. He was socially inept, so would say and do odd things which people picked up on a lot. But his heart was always in the right place. He put in a lot of effort, but very few people responded at all. Those that did mostly made snide comments about the event behind their back, like dissing the location, etc. Some made fun of him personally, too, as he was doing some admittedly odd OTT organizing. Then, close to the event, he cancels and blows up, sending everyone a justified message about how they can all go suck eggs and he was just trying to do something nice and wanted to catch up with people. That was received with more snide remarks, too. He died unexpectedly just just a few months later. He died from a heart attack. He was a very large person, which seems to have contributed. I'm not sure if many people from the reunion know or not. I found out on Facebook that he was a friend there. This was a 15-year reunion, so 30, 31 years old, UK. I'm from the UK, so maybe our reunions here are different from the US. Most of the people who didn't reply seem to be the more decent people, and coincidentally, the ones who have moved away or just moved on in their lives. Those who did were mostly the ones who still spent every week at the same bar with their same school friends. When it was canceled, they all actually went out the same night for drinks, but didn't invite the organizer. An OTT example of organizing was explaining the color theme of the space to everyone so they can make sure they color coordinated their outfits. Story 10. My 10-year reunion killed itself before it happened. Turns out our class president, traditionally in charge of organizing, took a hard turn into a footloose character after high school. Originally said she took a hard turn for the evangelical, to avoid objections lumping this brand of crazy into evangelism, for which I apologize. Highlights of her event planning include, no alcohol allowed, not even bring your own beer. A few classmates in a reasonably successful band offered to play for free. She was adamant that there would be no music or dancing. Plus ones were to be spouses only. Two guys happily told her they'd bring their husbands, and she kicked them both from the Facebook page. The venue was the high school's soccer field in Iowa in August. We were welcome to bring our own chairs. A few people offered to bring beanbags and bocce and similar games. She said no because it would make the reunion too much like tailgating. Suggested entertainment was a guided tour of the school, which had undergone zero change since we graduated. Catering was from Hy-Vee, which is a grocery store. Their food is actually okay, but tickets were $60. It was ultimately canceled because out of our class of 300, less than 10 people bought tickets. Okay, frequently asked questions. This was Eastern Iowa, Cedar Rapids, slash Iowa City region. Which makes the sudden footloose morals all the weirder. It's a pretty liberal area. I cast no judgment on Hy-Vee catering. Put down the pitchforks. Their food is good, just not $60 worth of good. I sadly couldn't come up with the name of the band, short of messaging dudes I haven't talked to in 20 years. Looks like they haven't been active in quite a while. A bunch of people who stayed local did indeed pick a bar and a Sunday night to meet up and had much amoral debauchery. Rumor has it, there was even karaoke. It makes a good story, but I'm ultimately sad for our event planner. I got the impression that she really needed everyone to see that she was the most good person who was doing everything right, and that she hadn't been in control of something in a long, long time. I hope she's doing better now. Yeah, that's a good lesson and who had authority. You can't just, instead, talk to everyone and agree to meet separately. Oofta. I know I said my reunions were in a pretty unimpressive place so I didn't go, but if I had been invited to go to this reunion on a soccer field with all of those rules, I would have been tempted to go just to yell at the planner for such a bad reunion. And uh, eat some of that tasty Hy-Vee catering, because Hy-Vee rules.
Story 9. Ten-year reunion invite came up, and I haven't seen him in years, so I bail on the reunion. Turns out, almost no one went. One of the girls that organized the thing was begging my mate to go because she was so embarrassed how little people had RSVP'd. She ended up bailing herself. Turns out, for the ten people that actually went, half of which organized it, they had to be split up since they booked a place that was not intended for large groups of people. Unironically, the same group that organized it took it upon themselves to organize our end-of-school formal, Aussie for prom. They decided for themselves that we didn't want to go with the original place plan and completely replanned it without really consulting the general student body. So many people bailed on it that they had to start inviting ex-students, dropped out, changed schools, expelled, takes some real crap to get expelled from a Catholic school in Australia, just to meet the minimum capacity for the venue required to move forward with the date. Honestly, I know they meant well, but this group ruined the formal for a lot of people. I don't know why I expected anything good from their reunion. Apparently, the after party was wild, though. Someone almost got thrown off the boat, literally into the water at 2 in the morning, and a guy we know copped a dong in the eye. To answer a few questions a lot of you have asked, he woke up the next day and sat up without opening his eyes. He had been sleeping on the floor, and someone was standing over him with his dong out. Why was it hard? I don't know. I don't want to know. LOL. The after party was formal, and the after after party is called the kick-ons. I'm sure the restaurant could have catered to 10 people. I assume some rocked up unannounced. If you get expelled from a Catholic school, at least in Australia, you cannot attend any other Catholic school. My school, at least, was hesitant to expel me as a result. They had told us this, but I can't remember if it was because they wanted to keep kids in Catholic school or if it was because we were preparing for the HSC, Aussie version of finals. Less than 24 hours after the main question was posted, my best mate found this on one of those YouTube Microsoft Sam videos. What the actual frick? I'm new to this. Is OP a hack or did he just get sniped? Good old Aussie after parties. There's always that one dude who either whips his dong out or gets butt naked. Ugh, a reunion at a fancy restaurant? That's what I want, to be forced to sit down and make conversation with a bunch of people I never got along with in the first place. If you want a good reunion, rent a yacht or something. Go wild. Story 10. Five-year reunion. One guy, always kind of a marginal figure in high school, but a nice person, after some sort of discussion, got his paycheck out and got loud saying, Now do you think I'm a loser? Don't believe how much I make? Check this out. Of course, he just made things worse and everyone was laughing at him. I mean, he had his paycheck on him? Haven't seen him since, by the way. Jesus, I mean, he could have at least done the more subtle douchebag thing like wear a giant luxury watch or show up in an exotic car. Story 11. High school jock violated a girl while she was passed out in a bathroom in high school. Ten years later, he took her to the side of the reunion to tell her to stop telling people he violated her. Holy crap, what the actual frick. Uh, yeah, gotta ask, why was he even invited? Sorry, but I feel like that earns you a permanent reunion ban. Story 12. Not high school, but one time I got invited to my college's alumni event. There was only a few years after I graduated, and I liked enough of my teachers just to go see them. Anyway, we pull into the college, and they have, like, ten bouncy castles set up for the event. I'm still confused. Story 13. At my 10-year reunion, the organizers were doing the thing where they give awards for the person who came the farthest to attend, the person with the most kids, etc. The award came out for who has the oldest kid, and people started shouting out their kids' ages. When it quieted down, this shy girl near the front said in a normal voice, 11, and then we all realized why we had stopped seeing Heather right before graduation. The Heather for my graduating class got pregnant in 8th grade. None of us believed her. It was really awkward when she had her baby. Story 14. During our reunion, a social group of cool people that I had cordial relations with during high school but was never part of all met up and were pretty happy about it. Until it somehow came out over alcohol that all of them had basically been having orgies together during high school, except one of them. He'd always seemed like a core member of the group from the outside, not unattractive or anything, but for some reason he was just never clued in to the fact that all his friends were fricking each other en masse for basically as long as they knew each other. There was some very eye-opening loud screaming. This just screams suburban Midwest to me. D why was there screaming? Was he really that upset about not boning his friends, especially ten years after the fact? That person maybe needs to let crap go, jeesh. 
Story 15. Someone who was considered a popular kid at my high school tried to organize our 10-year high school reunion on a cruise ship. Obviously, no one wanted to shell out that kind of money, so the reunion never happened. But, but that is the best reunion! Lots of drinking and endless free food! You graduated with a class of fools! Story 16. When I was in 7th grade, this rich snob bully John grabbed off my head a wool scarf my mother had knitted for me. He threw the scarf into a pile of muddy leaves and jumped up and down on it. When I went home that day, my mother was furious when she saw the torn muddy scarf. She made me tell her who did it, then she called the school principal and yelled at him. The next day, John got pulled into the principal's office and paddled. That was back when they still paddled kids. Fifty-five years later, at our 50th class reunion, John came up to me and angrily said, You got me into trouble in seventh grade. I got him in trouble? And he's still mad about it, fifty-five years later. I said, John, you were a dong in high school, and you're still a dong. And I walked away. Fifty-five frickin' years, and he is still mad. Story 17. Not mine, but my mother went back to her 40-year reunion last summer. In December, she left my father, 36 years of marriage, for her high school sweetheart and is now living with him. Holy crap, dude. Story 18. Small college reunion with my core group of friends from university. This was about five years after graduation. We all partied pretty hard in school, but mellowed out in our late 20s. Decided to all meet up for dinner at a local bar slash restaurant. Think Applebee's, but nicer. One guy showed up already wasted with a duffel bag full of multiple packets of weed and the bottle he started on before meeting us. He decided we were bored, finished his bottle in the restroom, and refused to come out. He ended up passing out there. Bartender kicked him out. Out. He came alone in an Uber and we had no idea where he lived. None of us wanted to take him to our places, he was angry, puking, and belligerent, so we dropped him off at his last known address, his parents' house. Both of them answered the door and we handed him over. It was past midnight and incredibly awkward. He's not invited to the next reunion. Story 19. So far, it was the only thing that happened at my high school reunion. Tenth reunion. Graduating class of plus or minus 850. Well-funded high school. Every class has a trust fund to fund reunions. A good friend of mine was our treasurer and organized it via Facebook. We started big. Ballrooms setting for a thousand people. Figured spouses, etc. A year out, lots of interest. Definitely not 1,000 people interest. Start to scale back. Six months out, less interest. Lots of people reconnected via Facebook and lost the drive to actually care. Scale back more. Three months out were deadlines for attendance. The school's alumni association would dispense the funds based on class size and allotment for the milestone. We hadn't put a deposit down because the target kept moving on attendance. Two months out, my friend finalizes and does a formal cutoff. She kept taking anything for a month due to lack of interest. Day of, it's at a local bar. Not a small bar either. Good food. Rented the entire place for a Friday night at that. 25-ish alumni showed out of 150 RSVPs, with spouses or whatever was around 40 people. The worst part is knowing so few people actually gave a crap, but the best part was the treasurer's smirk the entire night. The school had allotted $50 per person for this. $50 per person plus guests. $15,000 with instructions to pay everything fully. We drank and ate our butts off to the point of almost being Roman and the bill was $7,500 between food and rental. She paid the bill, then handed everyone $100 from the envelope and then handed the rest of the envelope to the manager and was like, here's the tip. So roughly $3,000 for the waitstaff and crew. Pretty memorable and honestly not that big of a bummer, but holy crap, people just don't care. Sounds like an awesome party. Yeah, I'm sorry, but this definitely sounds like the absolute best possible reason union you could have asked for. Nice bar, good food, tons to drink, and a hundred dollars for putting up with people you knew in high school. Story 20. Not so much at, but before. 10-year reunion for my largest school, 500 graduates per year. The plan was for the reunion to take place over Thanksgiving weekend. To help pay for the expense, raffle tickets were sent out to the entire class to sell. The reunion didn't happen. Why would you put it during a holiday weekend normally spent with family? Story 21. Didn't happen to me, but I had this friend who got someone pregnant back in the day, and she kept the kid. They've both been great about it. He helps financially, but that was the extent of his contribution. She married soon out of high school and met a great guy who has been the de facto dad. Either way, it's a day to bring your kids if you have an event and someone lets slip that my friend is that kid's real dad. 
and the kid heard it, and it was a frickin' crap show. Everyone was trying to figure out who said that, and how could someone spill that secret, etc. In the end, my friend pretended he was shot and laughed it off as a joke, which, honestly, in front of the kid was probably a good move. At least the kid had his two loving parents, that's the most important thing. Story 22. My therapist encouraged me to go for 10 years, which in retrospect was probably a play for job security. <laughs> Therapists really do shoot in the dark sometimes. Story 23. We had a teacher in high school that told us by the time you reach your 10-year reunion, at least one of your classmates will have died during a discussion about mortality. 10-year reunion arrives and nobody from our class has died. Saturday night of the reunion, we're partying and having a good old time. One of the organizers gets up to the microphone and is making some announcements. She gets a blank look on her face and drops to the floor. Brain aneurysm. She was dead before she hit the floor. Do not pee off that teacher. She's a witch. <laughs> I literally imagine that teacher is saying that in the voice of Maleficent. By the time you reach your 10-year reunion, at least one of your classmates will have died. Was the teacher standing at the back of the reunion next to a spinning wheel with a raven on her shoulder? Story 24. At my 20-year reunion, two decades after high school, two guys got arrested for fist fighting on the sidewalk outside the bar we went to Friday night. Why were they fighting? One of the guys slept with the other guy's girlfriend in high school and drunkenly brought up the 20-year-ago fling. Neither of them married her or even dated her after high school. Those idiots got charged 20 years later for her, though. These kind of stories really make me paranoid about if any of my high school girlfriends cheated on me until I realized I've never had a girlfriend. Guess I I win. Story 25. I didn't go for 10 years, but my entire friend group did, and they all called me asking where I was. I was on the phone with one of them. He goes, oh crap, Brittany is here. Brittany was a train wreck in high school and apparently hadn't changed in 10 years. She proceeded to get trashed, get in a fight with a waitress, and did M in the bathroom. Police picked her up that night after she was found dead in the McDonald's bathroom. Story 26. We'd been there less than an hour, having a great time reconnecting. Suddenly an old friend approached and said, Is that your wife over there? She's pretty hammered. And as we watched, she tripped and fell face first, full body crash into a 12 top table where many of my old classmates were sitting. The table broke, food and drinks flew everywhere. I walked over, scooped her up, and half carried, half walked her out the door. She took Xanax before going, unbeknownst to me, and was an alcoholic who started slamming drinks as soon as she got there. So, good times. I don't know whether to laugh or ask if she's okay. Story 27. My class never got to the reunion part. Our class president was MIA. When they tried to plan our five-year reunion on Facebook, it devolved into people fighting over the venue and whether or not kids were allowed. Half the people wanted to get trashed and get away from their kids if they had any. The other half wanted a dry reunion in a local park with kids allowed. Our class also had no money because they spent it on stupid crap senior year, so people argued over whether it would be catered or a potluck, and how much they would collect from everyone if it was the former. This was a fund for a senior trip, prom, etc. I don't remember where the money came from, just know it ran out. I would not have gone even if they managed to figure something out. Oh my god, I'm only now realizing that some high school reunions allow kids. Oh, that sounds like going to a work picnic, but with people I like even less than co-workers. Story 28. No one came. I went to my tenure. It was admittedly a really freaking small town, so my class was only 27 people. But only four people showed up and one was actually homeschooled. It kind of sucked. I was looking forward to seeing people and traveled from a long way away, 3,000 miles. It kind of jaded me towards my classmates. I'm not angry or anything, just a realization that there really wasn't any connection that survived. To me, that strong feeling that there is no connection is the main reason to attend one. Traveling that far hurts, though. Story 29. At the after party, one guy got drunk enough to think it was a great time slash place to discuss race relations with one of our black classmates. Well, not so much discuss as randomly impose the topic. The cringe nearly killed us all. Story 30. The class officers did a five-year reunion on Thanksgiving weekend at a local bar. They only invited who they liked, 30 to 40 people. One of the people they didn't invite had become a police officer who talked his supervisor into running a DUI checkpoint. Almost half the people who went ended up going to jail that night. Two of the organizers ended up with drug charges as well as DWIs. The 10-year started off better but still ended up being a cluster frick. They decided to go with a picnic to the same place we had our senior 
picnic. One of the class officers had started a catering company and gave themselves the job. About one-third of the people ended up with food poisoning. Thankfully, COVID caused our 20 years to be canceled. Almost half the people who went ended up going to jail that night. Two of the organizers ended up with drug charges as well as DWIs. To be fair, even though the guy was a petty narc, you have to hit a decent limit for a DUI. No doubt those people shouldn't have been driving, which is why they got arrested. Oh, honestly, one of the cringiest things to me is the fact that so many of these are put together by the class officers or whatever you call them. I thought it was dumb when they thought it meant something back in high school, but to be like, I was class president 20 years ago, so I get to organize the reunion is just so sad to me. Story 31. Didn't attend as I had moved far from my home, but in the process I was emailing the organizer and wanted to get in touch with an old friend, figuring she could pass my message on. She had the misfortune of having to tell me he passed away at 30 from diabetes complications. Rough day, and I didn't even attend. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Dang. Story 32. Went to my partner's five year at the local Elks Lodge. He grew up in a really rich town, so it was super extravagant. Best part was the open bar until like 9 p.m. and then cash afterwards. We were all having a great time until some scumbag snuck into the basement and stole a bunch of booze, literally multiple boxes. When the bartenders found out at 8.30, they were furious and kicked us all out. Ruined what could have been an excellent night. If it was an open bar, the booze was free, hence no crime was committed. Your Honor, I call for a dismissal. Story 33. Not mine, but my husband's. Ten-year anniversary for high school graduates. The whole thing was really just sloppily slapped together, and it was pretty clear the class was not interested in getting together. The gathering place kept changing every couple weeks. This was updated via Facebook group, by the way. At first, it was renting a place and getting food catered and whatnot. Except it's pretty typical in my town for most people not to go on to be successful by any means, so asking mostly unemployed or minimum wage workers to cough up, I think $200 to attend just didn't work out. Venues kept downgrading to accommodate until they got down to having a bonfire out by the lake, bring your own beer, no fee, just come hang out for like an hour or something. Throughout the fiasco of finding a venue, a majority of the class declined going. Some had to change status. There were a good handful still marked as going, but with everything changing and people obviously starting to tune out midway through, a lot of people forgot to change their status of going to not going. Two people showed up. That was it. One was my brother, who had nothing better to do anyway. Another guy that sort of helped put the crap show together showed up. The gal that set the whole thing up was pretty mad about it, and the random dude that helped posted a long rant on Facebook about how awful people were and how they should have appreciated the efforts it took just to hold the pathetic gathering. My husband had me sit and flip through the page after everything was said and done. It was pretty obvious the gal was in serious denial the entire time, despite it being pretty clear nobody wanted to anything to do with the event. I laughed at the rant, then honestly forgot about it until I saw this thread. I failed to mention that my brother and husband were in the same year. They were buddies throughout high school, college, and even now. I'm just a little younger, hence why I was not part of the reunion and my brother was. And no, my husband refused to go to the reunion because clicking through Facebook profiles was enough to check on people he had any curiosity about. Plus, we just moved states right around this time, so traveling was not on our list of to-do anytime soon. Sounds exactly like my 10-year reunion. About 10 to 12 people ended up showing up. I didn't go, but saw the pictures on Facebook. And the girl who organized it posted a long rant on the Facebook event page. I found the whole thing quite amusing, as I've always disliked this particular girl, and she was a huge bee to me in high school. Yeah, when I was contacted about my reunions, it was also through Facebook. I wonder why these people think, hey, we should use the website that has made reunions completely redundant to try to convince people to go to a reunion. Story 34. My sister, my now husband, and I were all in the same graduating class, plus my husband's best friend. Best friend's name is something like John Smith. Very common. He was very popular in high school. Super nice guy, stood out in a crowd. If you didn't know him, you certainly knew of him, even in a massive school. So anyway, the 20-year reunion rolls around. My sister is the only one who wanted to go. She called right after, very upset. Apparently, there was a huge memorial wall for John Smith, who had just died. None of us knew. Awful. My husband was like, huh? But we just saw him. Called him up and was like, 
Hey dude, are you dead? No, not dead. Surprised, but not dead. Anyway, it turned out the much less popular other John Smith was the one who died. They made a lovely memorial for the wrong guy who was totally forgotten. We still run into people to this day who see him and are like, hey, aren't you supposed to be dead? This is actually horribly sad for the guy that actually died. Still friggin' hysterical though. Story 35. The high school I went to had a really big gang problem. A great many people didn't attend due to being in prison. Some of those were in gangs in high school had worked their way through the ranks. One in particular was pretty high up. He decided to show up. It was generally peaceful until somebody decided to stick him with a knife. Then all hell broke loose. The dude that got shanked was a colossal butt to me through all of high school, and now he's bleeding profusely from multiple stab wounds. Being an off-duty medic, I did what I do, half expecting him to bleed out on the gym floor. He didn't remember me, there wasn't that movie moment between us. I doubt he even recognized me. I just kept plugging holes and thinking I shouldn't have worn my nice shoes. Cops and EMS arrived, few people got arrested, he survived, I ended up tossing my favorite dress shoes in a really nice pair of pants because they were too blood-soaked to rescue. Story 36. Some girl confessed to cheating on her high school sweetheart thinking enough time had passed it wouldn't bother him. She thought wrong. I just realized I spelled school school since it was so well received. I'll add some details here so that they're all in one place. The reunion was 10 years later. The two of them hadn't seen each other in years. As far as I know, they broke up shortly after high school ended. After she broke the news, somewhat nonchalantly as well, the guy flipped out and slapped her then started screaming at her. She ran away, at which point he broke down and said something about wasting his high school years and left. We still managed to have a good time even after all that, though, which was nice. And all you comedians misspelling school and saying Bob isn't cool, insert appropriately severe threat here. What a pathetic guy reacting like that. Literally almost everyone wastes their high school years when it comes to romance. That's kind of what those romances are for. You're both still learning about yourselves, and if you're holding on to old high school romances ten years later, you have bigger problems. Oh, and if you're in high school reading this, obviously I don't mean your relationship. That one is definitely for realsies. Story 37. Not me, but a former friend of mine. My wife and I went to her high school reunion at a brewery back in Michigan. The former friend of mine showed up after a bit. That friend happened to be in the same graduating class as my wife. I didn't attend the same school. Anyway, she got there and I asked how she had been. Her response? Really bad. She proceeds to tell me that she and her boyfriend split up, she had a crap low-paying job, and so on. Also, it doesn't help that she really doesn't get along with most of her classmates that attended. The night goes on and everyone is catching up and and having a good time. My former friend says goodbye and goes out to the parking lot to her car. She comes back saying someone ran over her car. Everyone assumes she meant someone hit her car, you know, like dented the bumper or something. Nope, someone with a trucker SUV literally ran over her car, drove on top of it, and took off. God, that's horrible for her. 